If you give this obey me, I will divorce you. Divorce? Ever since my husband had the money, he changed. Money can truly be a terrifying creature. The more you have it, the happier you think you will be. To you out there, beware. Pitfalls are surprisingly close at hand. My name is Ada, a 45 year old part time housewife. I've been married for about 18 years. My motto in life is to be diligent and sensible. Despite experiencing marriage and childbirth along the way, I've never given up my job and have preserved to this day. My husband has also been working for a long time in a company. He never got promoted as he hoped, so our life wasn't easy. Nonetheless, we managed to support our family together and get by. We have two sons, one in high school and the other in middle school. If we don't indulge in luxuries, we can make ends meet, but financial worries never cease. How much will it cost to put both kids through university? Today, Just like any other day, I'm facing off with household accounts, a calculator, and words about money. Ada, what's wrong? You look stressed. My husband Arvin says this with a carefree smile on his face as he opens his third beer bottle. This month, we had various expenses. We need to cut down somewhere. Cutting down? You're always the same, huh? Listen, even though you are laughing as if making fun of me, the beer you are drinking, I mean, you are drinking too much. The prices of things are going up recently, you know. Even beer isn't exempt from that. I muttered in frustration. And then, my husband laughed again, as if mocking me. Oh well, Ada, you are really stingy. What? Stop using that word. Sorry, sorry. We need to save up for the kids' tuition. And we also have to set aside money for our retirement. However, it seems my worries appear groundless to my husband. But, Ada, you know what? When we retire, we will have our retirement funds, won't we? Plus, we will get pension payments. Arvin says this, but I'm filled with anxiety. Both of us are working as employees, managing somehow. But we don't know when the company might go bankrupt or when one of us might lose our job. So I'm desperately trying to ensure that we can survive even in such situations. Ada, you're overthinking things, you know. Be more optimistic like me. But I. These days. I find myself occasionally envying my husband's carefree attitude. Despite that, there is something I enjoy. It's a monthly ritual of buying a lottery ticket. I'm not really into gambling, but thinking of it as buying dreams makes it fun. The anticipation leading up to the result is an indescribable moment of bliss for me. You are still buying lottery tickets, even though you probably won't win. It's just a waste of money. My husband scoffs at my secret indulgence. Ada, you are always talking about saving money, but you still splurge on things like this? A single lottery ticket a month is hardly a splurge. It's cheaper than your daily beer expenses. Besides, that Wagyu steak we had the other day, I bought it with the hundred dollar I won from the lottery. You were enjoying it, weren't you? Honestly, my dear husband, you are so carefree. I have no shortage of complaints about my husband. But for now, we are managing to live as a family of four. To be honest, that's enough to make us happy. We don't struggle for our daily needs. Our children are healthy despite their teenage antics. And where there were worries, there aren't any overwhelming grievances. However, One day, an event occurred that changed everything. On that day, when I returned home from work, it was unusual for my husband to be home before me. Oh, you're home early. He seems somewhat restless. 
or maybe it's just my imagination. It was six in the evening, and our sons hadn't returned from school. I was about to start preparing dinner before they got back, but something was off. Ada, there is something important I need to tell you. My husband began with a serious expression on his face. Huh? What's going on? Is everything okay? Just sit down for a moment, please. Following his request, I took a seat. Then, my husband pulled something out of his suit pocket. I. I won! Huh? You won? What are you talking about? This! Look! Stop teasing me! Seriously, what is it? It's three million dollars! I won three million dollars in the lottery! What? I was lost for words. R really? Yeah! I double checked multiple times! There's no mistake! I won three million dollars! No, that can't be. It's not possible. My head was spinning. I've been buying lottery tickets every month for decades, and at most, I've won a few hundred dollars. Now, my husband, who rarely buys it, suddenly wins three million dollars. I couldn't believe it until I saw it with my own eyes. I checked the winning numbers online. Sure enough, they matched. No way! This can't be true! I was so surprised that I nearly fell out of my seat. Erwin, this is... it's a miracle! Yeah, it seems miracles really can happen. With this, we won't have to worry about money anymore. I'm sure God rewarded us for our hard work all these years. Oh my gosh, yes, yes! We frolicked around like children, despite our age, my husband and I. On that day, our family went to a French restaurant for dinner. We also shared the news with our two sons. Seriously? Dad, that's amazing! So we are going to be rich! Awesome! Their faces lit up with excitement. I too was caught up in the joy of the moment. It felt like proof that there really was a higher power. We thanked my husband for his spontaneous decision to buy the lottery ticket and enjoy a delightful French feast as a family. Life after that felt like heaven. It's a good opportunity. Maybe we should buy a car. How about going to that fancy Italian restaurant tonight? Maybe this year, we should take a bold step and go on an overseas trip. The joy of living without financial worries was truly incomparable. We thought of every luxury imaginable and put it into practice. We were feeling like celebrities. Happiness can be bought with money, huh? My husband often said things like that. I agreed with half of it, but also felt a sense of unease. We had experienced times without money together. I sensed a bit of overconfidence in him. Recently, he even paid the entire bill for a drinking party with his co-workers, including covering their tax fares. I had thought that after indulging in some luxuries for a while, we would save money for our retirement and our children's future. But Arwin was changing rapidly. He became more and more irrational. Then one day, I want to rebuild our house. Rebuild it? According to my husband, it would cost around $600,000. What? Spending that much money for what? To have my parents move in with us. It will make things easier for us, and we will be able to take care of them. Huh? Why suddenly? If it were about taking care of them in case they needed help, I might understand. But Arvin's parents were still healthy. Our relationship with them was good and I believed we could live harmoniously together. However, my concerns were not about that. $600,000 is a huge sum of money. What are you talking about? We have the money, don't we? Wait, wait. Let's calm down and discuss this a bit. I tried to persuade my husband, 
We can't just casually spend six hundred thousand dollars like that. We don't need to rush into this. Why don't we listen to your parents' opinions? Let's really think about whether this is necessary, okay? At that moment, my husband seems to calm down temporarily. However, his behavior continued to worsen over time. Hey, hurry up with the food! He became visibly arrogant. I know you are planning to leech off my money, right? You are such a cunning woman. He started making condescending remarks. Are you still holding on to the issue about the house, Arwin? Stop it, seriously. Why should I listen to you anyway? Why do I need your permission to take care of my parents? I believe I'm speaking quite reasonably. Even your parents had the same opinion. In fact, I suddenly brought up the topic of living together with my in-laws, and their response was, "At this age, we don't want to leave our familiar surroundings. Plus, we don't want to be a burden to you." They said that. However, my husband wasn't convinced. After that, he continued to mutter complaints under his breath. Since then, our arguments only grew more frequent. Even over trivial matters, my husband would find fault and eventually say things like, "You dislike everything about me, don't you? You're only after my money." And so, the situation worsened. The atmosphere within the household continued to deteriorate. One day, my husband came home unusually drunk. Apparently, he had been drinking with his boss. You've had quite a bit to drink. Here, have some water. However, when I offered him a glass, he swatted it away. Hey, what are you doing? You are enjoying a life of luxury with my lottery winnings. And yet, you oppose me building a house. You are such a wicked wife, Ada. Wicked wife? I'm worried, you know. You've been spending money extravagantly, and you've already used up a considerable amount. Do you realize that? On top of that, if we build such a lavish house, we will eventually run out of money. We need money for our son's future and our retirement preparations. And upon hearing this, my husband's expression grew even more sullen. That's enough. If you keep opposing me like this, let's get a divorce. A divorce. What is this? Are you threatening me? I tried to dismiss it, thinking he might be saying such nonsense under the influence of alcohol. But then. He continued, "You know what? I have money. You are not the only woman around here. There are plenty of women who'd come running if I threw some money their way." I never expected my husband to be so crude. That was when he revealed that he had been fooling around with young women. If you want me to stay from now on, listen to what I say without complaining. We are going to build a new house and live with my folks, and I'm going to keep on cheating. At that moment, I felt my love for the man I'd been with for nearly twenty years fading away. Fine, let's get a divorce. I declared it right then and there to my husband. Huh? Are you serious? Yes, I am. You regret this? No, but you will. I stared at him with a cold gaze. I won't share any of the winnings with you. Is that okay? It's fine. Let's get a divorce. Don't regret this. Not long after, we got a divorce. Our two sons' custody was granted according to their wishes, and I received custody. My husband attempted to use money to sway our sons' decisions, but their determination remained strong. Nah. We enjoy luxury, but honestly, we prefer your cooking even more, Mom. It's quite unexpected for me. My sons would say something like that. We were getting fed up with Dad's attitude, to be honest. We'd rather have less than return to that house. I will work part time to help us, you know. You guys, thank you. 
but you do not need to worry about anything. Their words warmed my heart, and I couldn't help but shed a tear. And time continued to pass. It was around two years after the divorce. We had settled into our new home, and were getting used to living as a family of three. It happened on a sunny afternoon during a holiday, when my phone suddenly rang loudly. Ada! Please help me! My ex husband's desperate plea echoed through the phone. What could he possibly want? What's the matter? Why are you yelling all of a sudden? Please! I need you to lend me some money! His unexpected request left me utterly surprised, almost causing me to drop my phone. What on earth is going on? Why does he need money? He explained that he needed a significant sum of money by the end of the month. Apparently, he had quit his job shortly after our divorce. He had been persuaded by a consulting company to become the owner of a cafe. It seemed he had a dream of being on an employer's side rather than being employed. He was offering places and funding to people interested in running a cafe. This would make him the owner. And he would receive a portion of the cafe's profit. I will handle all the complicated stuff for you. We've been looking for someone like you. All you need to do is provide the initial investment. Your dreams can come true. This is your chance. Money needs to be utilized wisely, not just left to sleep. My ex husband fell for those words and became obedient to the consultant. In the first few months, we were making profits, but gradually the sales started dropping. At this point, the consultant presented my ex husband with another business opportunity. This time, it wasn't about a cafe, it was about becoming a real estate owner, buying apartments, repaying the loan with a rental income. Once the repayment is done, it becomes passive income. You've seen those ads, right? So I thought it was a safe bet. However, you see, we couldn't find any tenant at all, and the loan repayments turned out to be a struggle. I ended up using up the three million dollars. What? Are you serious? Only in just two years? That's unbelievable. Actually, I also built a house. After I divorced you, I ended up building a new house. She told me to do it. It turned out that after divorcing me, he had met a young woman in her 20s who was involved in the nightlife industry. He intended to use the cafe's earnings and the apartment rental income to cover the loans for the house and the vacation home. However, with no substantial income from the cafe or real estate, he ended up using up the $3 million for loan repayments. Still, that consultant seems to be quite competent. They found a perfect victim like you and managed to pull off their scheme. Well, can you sell the vacation home or the house? That way, you could at least liquidate some assets, right? If I do that, she might leave me. Plus, even if I sell, the debt will still remain. Hey Ada, how much savings do you have? Can you contribute a little to repay the loans? What? Why should I? Are you kidding me? You are a stranger to me. Don't be so cold. We were a couple once, weren't we? And you completely destroyed that, didn't you? Ada, please. I'm begging you. I was so disgusted by his pitiful state that I couldn't find the words. At the same time, I feel grateful for divorcing him back then. It was a relief not to be caught up in this mess. I had sensed his skewed sense of money even before, but I never imagined it would escalate to this extent. Anyway, you are just a stranger to me now. Well, I suppose I could consider waiting the child support. Child support? Y yeah, that's right. Could you give back the child support I've paid so far? In return, I will take care of the kids. What an idiot. I was truly dumbfounded. I declined. It's none of my concern. 
so please don't contact me anymore. I hung up the phone forcefully. In the end, my ex-husband sold the house and vacation home. The loans remained, and he lost contact with both the woman and the consultant. Sometimes, I hear from my son that he still buys lottery tickets and has dreams of turning things around. Well, having dreams is a good thing, but it's not just me who feels conflicted every time I hear that. As for me, I've been balancing work and raising my children diligently. Thanks to the good performance this year, my summer bonus was twice as much as usual. I bought my sons what they wanted, and I finally treated myself to a laptop I'd been wanting for a while. Also, I've developed a habit of online shopping lately.